Hi, this is Rhonda and welcome back. Today I'm gonna make um, elk asada. So I'm gonna be making it with elk meat, obviously from the name. And I just wanna thank my husband and my son for going out elk hunting and my son was able to get an elk. And if you know anything about elk hunting, you know that anybody in the group that gets an elk is quite the accomplishment. So we have a lot of meat and so I'm probably gonna be doing, going forward um, quite a bit of uh, cooking with the elk meat. So it's 100% uh, it's organic, so that's good. And I'm gonna get started right now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I bought some Flabamo chilies at the store, these type, and I'm gonna show you how to wash these up. So these type, I'm gonna bring this over to the sink. And I'm just gonna Start by rinsing them off really well. Get anything off of them that doesn't need to be on them. They do obviously for outside, so I'm going to set that aside. Okay, so what I like to do is take the stem out. So I've already rinsed them off really well. I'm going to take the stem out. Very carefully with a really sharp knife, but just be careful not to let it slip. So I'm going to pull this out, and then I'm going to just I'm going to actually cut this in half, and then I'm going to take out the seeds as much as possible because I don't want it too hot. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna rinse this off in the sink, and then I'm gonna do the same thing to this pepper. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and slice up this bamboo chili, and I'm not gonna leave it in huge pieces. But I'm not gonna make it too small either. So I'm somewhere in between. Okay, so I'm going to continue to cut these up so you have the idea. Now I'll, I put all the peppers into the container I'm going to marinate the meat in. And the more tender the meat is, the less you want to marinate it because you don't want it just to turn into mush. So today I'm going to probably marinate for a few hours just because... Um, that's, you know, it all depends on your schedule. If I was making this, to, I could marinate it today and then make it tomorrow and that would be okay. So either way is fine, but I'm going to marinate it probably about four or five hours. So I, I cut up the ends of the onion. I'm rinsing my knife off. And then I'm going to just take kind of the first little bit of this and then peel the skin off. And I'm going to rinse everything off because you can't be too careful with onions. I'm going to make sure everything's nice and clean. Okay, so now I got my clean onion, and I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. But for right now, I'm just going to cut this in half, and then I'm going to look inside, and I'm going to get this part. It's easier than trying to core it the other way. And I can already smell that those peppers are super fresh, which is really nice. So I'm going to slice my onions up. I'm using red onions today. I'm going to put that in the mixture. And then I'm going to do the next one, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my onions, I have my poblamo chilies, and I'm going to put in a heaping, I have some minced garlic. I'm going to put in a heaping tablespoon of garlic, because I really like garlic. And boy, are these onions strong. My eyes are already watering. I'm also going to take a little bit of the the juice from this minced garlic. A lot of times I do the garlic from scratch. Today I'm just using the prepared minced garlic, whatever you and you like to do. Um, I'm a little bit short on time, so I'm gonna use the minced garlic, also short on garlic. So I'm gonna mix this up. 
with my hands and separate the onions. And then the next thing I'm going to do after I do this is I am going to cut up the elk meat so it's actually ready to go. So later today when I go ahead and um, go to cook this, the meat, everything will be all ready to go. So it'll, it'll be a time saver. Okay, so I have this, this particular elk meat. Um, we actually uh, take care of the meat ourselves completely. We don't go to the butcher. But this, it was labeled sirloin pieces. So they're not sirloin steaks, they're sirloin pieces, so it's great for this sort of thing. So it should be pretty tender, let's see. I'm gonna cut it up in probably bite-sized pieces, maybe I like this. We'll see how it goes. I'll cut some of it up on camera, some of it I won't cut up on camera, that way you don't have to. It looks like it's pretty darn tender. And yes, people are going to say, hey, that looks a little bit bloodier than what I get from the store. And it will, at least the way that we do it. So it's super, super fresh meat, which is really my favorite type of meat. So now you can make this exact same dish. If you do not have elk meat, you can make this exact same dish with beef. You could also make it with deer meat. And pe a lot of people just as a... A blanket term, ven uh, venison is deer or elk. So if somebody says, oh, it's venison, that's it's a deer or elk. So but you can make this if you're watching this video and you don't have access to uh, deer or, or elk meat, you can make it with beef. And I really don't do anything special. Um, if, if I can make it with beef, I'll make the same meal with deer or elk. Just in case somebody's wondering about that. I'm just, if there's a little bit of what I call gristle or fat, I'm trying to trim it. My son trimmed most of it off already. But when I'm cutting through, if I get hung up on something. So you just have to kind of try to... Um, and sometimes it doesn't always work out. Try to make it as close to the same sizes. But we're going to put this in a tortilla wrapper. And, um, and so I'm trying not to have too big a pieces. Some people just serve it and then have a tortilla on the side. But we're going to kind of serve it and wrap it up. So I don't want too big a pieces. But yeah, you can see by the way I'm cutting that this is very tender meat. So this is going to make a great elk asada. Okay, so I'm going to continue to cut this up. I'm just showing you here. I'm going to continue to cut this up, and then I'll be back and Okay, so I have my meat cut up. Here's the meat. And I have a bowl that I use that I know this is how much meat I need to cook a meal. So if you have a bowl that you can measure out, and each time you know if you fill up that bowl and you have enough meat, that's actually quite helpful. Anyway, so I have my garlic, onions, peppers, I have my meat, and I'm going to go ahead and um, add the meat to this mixture. Then I'm going to add some liquid. So I think I guess I'll start with this, get this mixed up. I'm going to just mix it up really well. I was debating, what, am, what should I do first? Well, this is probably a good start. Then I'm going to have to change gloves, though. Because if I try to take these gloves off, it's not going to work. So this is already smelling delicious, and I haven't even, I haven't even really started. So just with those ingredients, it smells delicious. So I'm going to take these gloves off. So I have a measuring cup, and I'm going to put some, what I decided for today's marinade, and it's always different. Usually, not always. Um, sometimes uh, it's the same, but most of the time I always make it slightly different. Okay, so I have some orange pineapple. So I'm going to do some orange pineapple. I'm going to pour it in here. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of lemonade. So it's about a cup. We'll see how that works out first. Sometimes I just kind of experiment and see what comes out good. Okay, I'm just going to do a splash of lemonade. And now in this mixture, I'm going to add my spices. I'm going to do some Mexican oregano. 
not to be confused with Italian oregano. And then I'm going to do some cilantro. To pour some out in the cap because it's not wanting to come out. Put a little bit of that in here. And then I'm going to do a little bit of cumin, not a lot of cumin, strong flavor. A little bit of cumin. Too much right there, so I'll put a little bit back. A little bit of cumin, and then I'm going to do more garlic, garlic powder. I like a lot of garlic. My family likes a lot of garlic. Some onion powder, some black pepper, and I'm going to take a fork and I'm going to stir this all up. I'm making a mess. If I'm not making a mess, I'm usually not cooking. Okay. Gotta get this going really good. Hope everybody's having a really good day today. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in here and I, then I'm gonna put on, I'm gonna pause the video for a second, get some more gloves, put on the gloves, see if I have enough liquid in here to really marinate it properly. Okay, I have some gloves. Mix this up. Give this meat a bath in all this juice. And then mix it and push it down. These onions are strong and these peppers are strong. So if I start sounding like I'm losing my voice, it's because it's so strong. Okay. So this looks pretty good. I feel like I need just a tad more juice, so I'm going to just add a little bit more of the orange pineapple. Let's see if I can do this with one hand so I don't have to lose the gloves. Let's do a slight more amount just to make sure. I really want to make sure I'm covering. Okay, now I'm going to mix some more. I'm going to push this down. And if I have an opportunity halfway through with being marinated, I might go back in here and mix it up. But I might not need to, actually. It's looking pretty, it's looking pretty good. I don't want to have too much liquid either because then that would just be a waste. So I think we're okay. It's pretty well covered here. So now I'm going to marinate this for about four hours before I cook it. If you wanted to at this point marinate this overnight, that's fine too. But I would say a minimum of three or four hours would be would be good as a minimum. Any longer is okay too. I wouldn't go days and days because it is very tender meat and you don't want the, the meat to just disappear. So I'm going to cover it, put it in my fridge, and I will be back later. And we will go ahead and um, use cast iron skillet and cook There's this up. some tortillas that are from the store. They're raw. And then you just cook them. And they cook really fast. And as soon as, I'll tell you when you need to flip them. I have a nice uh, flat top uh, cast iron skillet that I only use for tortillas. So I get the heat up very hot. And as soon as you start to see bubbles like this, it is time to flip. So it gives that homemade taste. And I'm just going to double check, make sure I don't have any raw spots, and I'm good to go. Hi, I'm back. And it's been about four hours of me marinating this meat. I'm going to just show what it looks like here. And in the meantime, I've also made a stack of tortillas that I'm trying to keep warm. And I'm going to go over to the stove here in just a sec, and we're going to cook up this luscious elk meat and it smells so good already and it's it hasn't even been cooked and it smells really good so i'm excited about how this is going to come okay, out so i have put in some olive oil in the pan and some butter in the pan and now the meat's been soaking in liquid so what i want to do because i don't want it to end up boiling i need it to like you know saute really well and have a nice brown to it 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I have a spoon that's like this. And I'm going to go ahead and lift the meat out of, if you can see, I'm making sure that I'm putting the meat in a different bowl so that I'm kind of draining, I don't know if you can see. Okay, I'm just kind of not including the liquid, just draining the meat and the peppers and the onions and the garlic. I'm just going to put it into this other bowl so when I cook it, I'm not adding all this extra liquid. But as you can see, the meat got, just in four, four, four and a half hours, the meat's gotten darker, so it's really saturated it. But I'm trying to keep the excess liquid. Okay, so this is ready to go, so I'm gonna start adding the meat. Try to spread it out as much as possible. I'm gonna turn this on high. Okay, I got a big bowl out. Thank you, Derek. Okay, so this is, some of this liquid off of this meat is boiling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all this to the side and kind of let some of this just boil off because I don't need all that because I want to put a brown on this. And there's just a, the meat was holding a lot of liquid. What I could do, another option to speed things up, is I will take this bowl right here. And I'll take this type of spoon, and I'm just going to get some of this out of here. And I'm going to add it later. So I'm just going to put it on the side. Because I got other, I got other, uh, liquid that I can do something with later. I'll take some of this out. I don't want to take the peppers out. I just want to take the liquid out. This nice spoon here. God, look how much liquid I do have. It's a lot. This should help a lot with things going quicker. Okay. So I'm gonna see. Now I'm gonna start stirring it up. Now it's better. Now it's a lot better. Okay, so you just keep on stirring this all up, make sure everything's blend it well. And I do have it on high. This is an electric range. So maybe if you have gas, maybe it would be hotter, depending on what type of electric range you have. It could be hotter. But I will show you what it's going to look like. What we need to do eventually is get a nice brown on this. Okay, so now we're looking good. I removed a little bit more liquid. And so now I think I'll be able to put a brown on this, which is really good. Because you don't want to overcook this meat either. Especially being game meat, you really don't want to overcook it. So, going high, got probably 98% of the, hopefully about 98% of the liquid out. And... Need to keep on stirring it and stuff. Okay, we're starting to sizzle. We're making progress. Okay, so now that a lot of the liquid is gone, I'm, I just kind of flattened my meat out, and I'm not going to stir it for a few minutes because I want it to really brown. So I'm just going to kind of wait 
and then I'm going to stir it. Okay, let's see how I'm looking. Now it's starting to smell like it's starting to brown. Okay, good. We're making progress. Let me show you. So we're starting to brown our meat a little. So that's a good sign. So now we got to now we got to stir more. Flatten it out again. Smells really good. It's starting to, I hope everybody can see this. this is, uh, fortunately, for this video, the smoke is going in the opposite direction, I think. It's a little smoky, but okay, I'm going to even turn down the heat a little because it's really starting to, it's really starting to brown now. Right? Looking nice. Let's see what it looks like. I think I'm almost ready to pull this. Because I do not want to overcook this meat. I am going to one more mix it around. this up and then move it over so it stops cooking hopefully and I'm going to put it in this bowl here Of course, if you don't have as much meat and veggies, it's not going to take as long to cook. And you wouldn't need as big a pan either. Okay, so. Okay. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to set this aside for a sec. Put this pan back on here. I'm going to take my meat, not my meat, my meat juices, and I'm going to heat it up here. That was from the marinade. And I'm going to put that on high so we can start cooking. Mix this up. that I pulled off of the meat. I'm going to keep them going. I'm going to make the heat a little higher because that was going down a little. Let that go for a little bit. Okay, so I'm boiling this up, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, so this is at a good boil right now, and I'm going to add some flour to this. I think I'm going to get out a wisp to do that. Probably be a smarter idea. Okay, set this aside here. Add a little bit of flour. I don't want to make a gravy out of this. 
know if that's enough flour or not. It may or may not be. I whisk this together until it thickens. And there's chunks of stuff that's the meat and the, you know, maybe garlic. Whatever I got in there. And add a little bit more flour. Open it up a little bit more. Smelling good. camera doesn't fall into the, the food, because that one can good. Stir that up. And this looks wonderful. Okay, I'm going to take it over to the countertop and put some in a tortilla with some cheese, and then we'll see how it tastes. Okay, so I put some meat down. I'm going to put a little bit of cheese. A little bit of Sour cream. And roll it up. Always get the sour cream kind of up to the side. Okay, can't wait to taste this. Mmm. 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 That came out really good. You can taste the citrus with the meat and all the spices. It's a nice blend between the citrus and the elk meat. Wonderful. Came out better than I even thought it was going to come out. So I'm really happy about that. And um, I shouldn't talk with my mouth full, but it takes me a long time to eat. So I would like to thank everybody for watching. Thank you for those who subscribe. If you don't subscribe, please subscribe to my channel. If you enjoyed this content, like it. And uh, it's free to subscribe. And I also want to thank my husband and my son for going elk hunting and my son for getting an elk because we have a whole bunch of wonderful tasting meat. It's so fresh. It's just really wonderful tasting. So thank you for watching. Have a great evening.